Welcome back. Talk at the table now. Some quick debates on some stories we just couldn't let slip past us. First, we're just two weeks away from what could be another landmark moment in gay rights here in the U.S. Two weeks from tomorrow, the Supreme Court hears the Prop 8 same-sex marriage case, which could potentially make same-sex marriage legal in every state. The following day, March 27th, the court hears the appeal of DOMA. That's the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, which prohibits same-sex couples from receiving most of the federally protected benefits that other married couples enjoy. In recent days, we've seen a number of high-profile appeals for both laws to be overturned. And there was another notable one last week from the man who signed DOMA into law. Former President Bill Clinton in the Washington Post reversed his stance, writing, quote, As the president who signed the act into law, I have come to believe that DOMA is contrary to those principles, freedom, equality, and justice, and in fact is incompatible with our Constitution. He added, I know now that even worse than providing an excuse for discrimination, the law itself is discriminatory and should be overturned. My initial reaction was, hey, congratulations, welcome to the party. I had forgotten that President Clinton signed this thing into law, but... If it's unconstitutional and discriminatory now, wasn't it unconstitutional and discriminatory in 1996 when he signed it? Yeah, absolutely. But in 1996 when he signed it, he's worried about Bob Dole. You know, so, so you know, Richard Sacchetti is a good friend of mine, wrote in The New Yorker that this was a political move that he made. You know, I, we've had to undo Don't Ask, Don't Tell from, uh, from Clinton. We had that, now we're going to have to undo DOMA and, and then Glass-Siegel. And we're finally going to you know, undo all the damage Bill Clinton did to this country. So uh, I'm glad that he's, he, uh, he wrote that op-ed. It's, is it 2016 already? You know, this, it's the first op-ed of the, of the Hillary Clinton campaign. Um, and, you know, it, so I'm glad he did it, but it's a little too late, in my opinion. Anybody else want to? I, I, I'm, I'm kind of stunned that, he, that he'd get into this at this point in time to, because it's so political, you know, and, and I think the thing that, that uh, President Clinton has done better than any other president is when he left office, he, he actually became much more popular. And he stayed out of the controversy. So I do think that it is a totally a, a political tact but in a sailing metaphor, that he's going to say, okay, let's expand the base of folks who can help my significant other get to office. I, I'll put it this way. What was the term they called Clinton? Um, Slick Willie? I believe that's it, yes. That, that's the that's term. One mm -hmm. of the things. That's what, well, <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking about right now. With all due respect to the president, I mean, keep in mind, this is the same president at the time when he was in office, the Republicans were hanging welfare reform over his neck. So what did he do? He beat him to the punch and signed it into law himself. Mm -hmm. Slick Willie, that's all it says. That's, that's, that's another thing we need to fix. I've forgotten about that. It's just, it's another one of these examples of while I'm in office, I'm going to do one thing, and then when I'm out of office, I'm, but, I feel free to do... Isn't that what presidents do? Not everybody. Not everybody. Yeah, I don't remember. I haven't, I haven't the, seen the, George W. Bush well, reverse right, himself. Well, the successful ones, that's what they do. <laughs> he could have filed a friend of the court brief. He did not do that. So he, he wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post, which is a neat way to get publicity, but he did not file the friend of the court yeah. brief like, like Obama did and, and like, uh, you know, uh, even Ken Melman uh, took time to do that. Former GOP chairman. Right. The guy who, who, who helped outlaw uh, gay marriage in 30 states. So, so, you know, Bill Clinton could have written it a couple of days earlier. Or a couple of years earlier. Yeah. Okay, next up, a dispatch from the It's Good to Be a Lawmaker file. Turns out it's also good to be a former lawmaker, even a disgraced former lawmaker who's now a convicted criminal. Oh, Hiram Montserrat, how can we miss you if you won't go away? Literally go away. When we last checked in on Montserrat, the former New York State senator with a history of beating up his girlfriend had been convicted of stealing 100 grand from a nonprofit he controlled to help pay for his state senate campaign. He was sentenced to two years in prison and was supposed to head to the big house today. But he was given an extra month of freedom because his teeth hurt. Montserrat got a root canal back in July, and his dentist is going really slow. His dentist says he needs eight more weeks for four more crowns, and the judge agreed. Montserrat must now turn himself in no later than April 11th. Let me start. Has anybody here had a root canal? I, 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 ha I have. It's the same day, right? Uh, Did mostly, it? yeah. It's <laughs> never really taken, never taken four weeks. Four weeks? But four according weeks. to the letter that the dentist provided for the judge, it's not just a root canal. It's a procedure. It's a root <laughs> canal. <laughs> it just keeps... Do, it, do, other, do other criminals get out of jail for four, for four weeks to have a, you know... A I'm, I'm not sure that you could get out of jail to have a root canal <laughs> at all. Uh, I think you might just have to sit there with bad teeth. But let's keep in mind, he's still going to jail. That's true. <laughs> It's just a month delayed, but he will be in jail. You have nice for, teeth. For his time. <laughs> He's going to have very nice teeth. He, he, should get, he should get some great, you know. Uh, yeah. um, okay, so I take it nobody else thinks that other prisoners would, would probably get this kind of treatment. It's, mm -hmm. uh, if you have the right lawyer. 
Fair enough. Or the right judge. Or maybe your lawyer's a dentist. Right. That's, <laughs> let's move on, shall we? It's looking more and more likely that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell will have a high-profile challenger in his re-election bid this fall, actress Ashley Judd. A bunch of reporting this weekend that Judd is all but certain to announce her candidacy sometime in May, dovetailing with the Kentucky Derby, a time when lots of added eyes will be on the bluegrass state. Judd is not confirming those reports, but she's not really denying them either. She's reportedly spoken with pollsters, media consultants, and leading political figures in Kentucky, though another report by a Kentucky newspaper says polling shows Judd wouldn't fare as well against McConnell as the state's Democratic Secretary of State would. One small, itty-bitty, baby potential problem for Judd, the Kentucky native does not currently live in Kentucky. Um, before we talk about Mitch McConnell or this race, if it winds up that way in particular, celebrity candidates. Mm. Celebrity candidates have an advantage, a disadvantage. I mean, they have name recognition, but they're so noted in the public eye for stuff that they've done. What do you think, celebrity candidates? Ronald I Reagan. You know, <laughs> failed president. That's all you need to. Well, <laughs> well a lot of people Arnold Schwarzenegger. You had, but you had Fred Thompson. Yeah. The comedian I mean, is in the Senate now. Or Al, what? Franken. Al, Al Franken. Al Franken. I mean, it, I think it certainly does in terms of name recognition. If you if you're running against somebody who perhaps doesn't have name recognition or or, certain, or has a really bad record, I think Mitch McConnell is pretty popular in Kentucky, and I think it's going to be an uphill battle for anybody. I think that's likely right. I mean, he's he's the the minority leader in the Senate. He's been. You know, he's he may be better known than Ashley Judd is. She hasn't done a lot of movies lately. Well, remember, they, they're already running negative ads against her uh, in Kentucky. They're going to bring back the Hillary Clinton thing of carpetbagger. You don't live here. You live in uh, in Tennessee. Uh, being a celebrity cuts both ways. It, tell us, tell us, Dominic, from no, your no, from your no, vast no, experience no, as a celebrity. No, tell us. Act, no, wait a minute. <laughs> your You're walking question, in that one. Your You're question out. was the question was being a celebrity yes. does it help or does it hurt? Yes. And I'm trying to answer the question. <laughs> I'm not saying anything else. Go ahead. Go ahead. I am I, just I, attempting. I apologize. I am attempting to answer the question on record. It cuts both ways. As you well know, if you're a celebrity, when you call a news conference, we're going to show up, mm -hmm. no matter what the subject is. Mm -hmm. We're going to be there with the camera. I don't care if it's 9 o'clock in the morning. We're going to be there because you're a celebrity, and you know, like I know, it helps our ratings. If you're not a celebrity, chances are, if you're not the front runner, or you don't have a real chance of winning, we don't care what you do, because we're not going to be there. Chances are. But it cuts both ways because when she makes a mistake and she's already stumbled once or twice, it's going to be magnified a thousand times a thousand. We, we could talk from time to time of a, of a celebrity maybe running for office in, in New York, particularly New York Mayor Alec Baldwin's name comes up from time to time. Uh, other names like that have popped up. Could you see that in New York City? Not, not with him, no. Not, not with him. him. Not with him. Yeah. Because he doesn't. The truth is, and I'm going to say it, Alec, he, he wants you to be his biggest fan. But he don't want you to ask him a single question. Right. He doesn't want to answer a real question. Newsflash, you can't run for office, Mr. Baldwin, and not for answer questions. Plus, page six really doesn't like that guy. No. But I think a billionaire businessman works better. I think you know, when you look at Corazon, you look at Bloomberg, I think that they have a, have a better way of understanding how to get money, how to utilize money. See, that, that's a part of the problem. You're, you're not endorsing Castamatitis, are you? Uh, no, no. Okay, just no, just, no, just, no. just checking. No, just checking. No, just checking. No, I, I've got my I've got my horse in the race, but but and that that will come out later. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to run. Chris, you run. How exciting! <laughs> And, play it this weekend. And, and, on, and on that note, one more story that we had to get to. Long Island Congressman Peter King, you know about his tough guy image and his tough talk on news shows like this one. Well, this weekend, the congressman put his money where his mouth is, or maybe you should say he put his face where his mouth is. King boxed two rounds with a former kickboxing champ to help promote a kickboxing event at the bar where the fight was held. King survived, got a few good shots in, posted to his Facebook page, I survived. Believe it or not, a D.C. watchdog group says the fight may have skirted House ethics rules, barring members from favoring one business over another, a claim the King's office uh, disputes. But, Michael, you were at this event? Mm -hmm, I sure was. All right, first of all, how had the congressman do? Well, well first of all, what a jammed event. It, it was, uh, I forget what charity it was for, but it was a charity associated with it. It just wasn't for the bar itself. And um, Pete King got in the round, uh, got in the ring after a lot of other fights, and, you know, he really took one. You know, he was up there, and he put himself in, in, the, in harm's way. I will say probably the guy wasn't out to kill him, you know. It didn't seem It like didn't that. seem that way. But you know what? Uh, Peter King has been, this is not a new fad for him. He's been doing this for years and years and years. And at one point, really was, you know, fighting. So, mm -hmm. you know. How old is he? 
I think it's mid. I don't actually want to say that. I think it's mid sixties. I didn't want to. I didn't want to say. He looks like he's pretty good with He looks great for his age, whatever his age is. I. This is kind of an awkward question, but is this really what we want to see our lawmakers doing on their downtime? Did anybody have a problem with that? What if he wanted to like do MMA or? Oh, we're so serious. Come on, can't we? Can't we just lighten it up a little bit? The guy wants to get it in the ring and mix it up for for a cause. And you know what the heck? He also supports boxing now. now that's controversial. Some people really don't like boxing as a sport. Mm -hmm. Thinks the sport should be banned. But you know, Peter, it's consistent with Peter King's image. If he was in the macrame. Or, or planting, you know, it, no, no, no. This is the guy, Homeland Security <laughs> Chairman. This is what you do. You go fight for the nation. You go after Al Qaeda, and you get into the boxing ring. Every okay, so here's our best Don King moment right now. Go ahead. Collectively, we can all be Don King. Since you don't approve of him in the ring boxing, the next fight, the next fight is him versus Andrew King. Whitman oh. versus the Congressman. Really? Who's gonna win that one? Um, Probably he will in a walkover because I don't think I'd show up. <laughs> really, you're gonna you're gonna put me in the ring like that? Well, He's you hit me out. on He's the celebrity out. thing. <laughs> calling out. I'm only joking. I appreciate that. Joking. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, for any booking engagements you need me for the ring, <laughs> his name is Dominic Carter. Good luck getting in touch with him. He's such a celebrity. He might not oh, answer the phone. We're gonna here take a quick goes. break when we come back. I'm gonna be hearing it from Dominic throughout this entire yes. commercial break. When we come back. My argument for why we should do away with this changing of the clock twice at this just stay with us unless you're an hour late to the show because you didn't change your clock. We'll be right back.